Hello and welcome, I'm your CodeMonkey. Here's an interesting video titled Learning Game Dev and Why I'm Glad I Didn't Start with Unity. Sounds interesting, so let's watch and I'll give you my thoughts from my perspective as an indie dev who has been using Unity professionally for over 10 years. I'm currently using it in my upcoming Steam game, Dinky Gardens, and I'm still very happy with my choice of engine. Seven years ago, 12-year-old me was very bored because my parents put a 30-minute limit on video games. I figured that if I could make games myself, the limit wouldn't apply. <laughs> That's a, a fun loophole, I guess. <laughs> if your parents limit how much game playing you can do, then yeah, I guess getting started into game development, I guess that could be one good way to avoid that limit. If your parents ask you, are you playing your game? You can say, nope, I'm not playing. I'm actually learning how to make games. So <laughs> I guess that's that's one way to work. This is when I decided that I would learn to code. I picked Python because it was the only language I knew of at the time. Python is actually a language that a lot of people recommend. Personally, I'm not a huge fan. I hate the fact that there are no semicolons. I hate the fact that there are no curly braces. So personally, I do not like the syntax behind Python, but a lot of people say it is one of the easiest languages to learn. It's not really very good for game development, but when you're learning, really all that matters is learning how to actually run the game logic, learning about game design, update loops, and all kinds of things, and you can really learn those principles in any language. So if you already know Python, it's not really a bad thing to start actually making games with Python. I installed the interpreter, googled some tutorials, and within a few months of using Python, I started to learn Pygame, which is a graphics library for Python. In the last few years, I've tried messing around with engines like Unity or Godot a bit, and I even participated in a game jam using Godot. When I was 12, I don't even think I knew what a game engine was. To this day, I'm still glad I chose Python over something like Unity. There are a bunch of ways to get into game dev, and in my opinion, there isn't really a one-size-fits-all method. Ultimately, the ideal route depends on what you're trying to do. When deciding where to start, there's one major choice that a lot of people seem to forget about. It's the decision of whether or not to use a game engine. This is one thing that you hear quite a lot. Should I even use a game engine or do it from scratch? On this topic, my advice is super simple. It is simply ask yourself, do you want to make a game or do you want to make a game engine? Generally, unless you are a genius, unless you are insanely productive, you cannot do both at the same time. If you want to learn how to make game engines, if you want to learn how to make some low-level code and figure out how OpenGL or DirectX works, that can definitely be fun. That is definitely one thing that I, personally I would love to learn about at some point in the future whenever I can find some time. But that requires a ton of work, requires a ton of effort. So in general, unless you are a massive outlier, you need to ask yourself, do you want to make games or do you want to make a game engine? Engines come with a bunch of built-in functionality that allows you to make complex games with minimal knowledge. They also handle a lot of messier stuff that goes into rendering, which is a big deal if you want to do 3D stuff. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, if you want to build your game engine from scratch, then all of those tools that you probably take for granted if you use any game engine, those do not exist. Like if you want to render a pixel on screen, in Unity, you just create a game object, then add a mesh filter and mesh renderer or a sprite renderer and boom, there you go, you've got something on screen. But if you're working on building your actual game engine, you've got to go into the OpenGL or the DirectX library in order to figure out, okay, how do I render a triangle on screen? Then you gotta figure out, okay, so how do I make all kinds of complex math transformations in order to figure out, okay, so the camera is looking from here with a certain perspective, how should that triangle look and so on. It is insanely complex, so that is why I say either make games or make a game engine, you gotta choose one or the other. This is usually done through some layers of abstraction, and you interact with that abstraction rather than using the lower level methods that things like graphics libraries use. Yep, again, I mean, if you want to render a mesh on screen in Unity, you just drag the mesh onto your project files, attach it to a game object with a mesh filter, and that's it, everything is rendering. You don't have to worry about vertices, perspective, camera, none of that. Just put it physically in front of the camera and boom, everything is rendered. So game engines do help a massive amount. They abstract away a lot of things so you don't have to worry about them. If you want to get into game dev and your only goal is to make games, then an engine is probably the right choice for you. However, there is a bit more to this story than there seems. If this was all there was to it, then I wouldn't be happy with the route I took. One of the major differences in using an engine or not using one comes down to what exactly you're learning. While you do learn the programming language your engine uses, assuming you're not using blueprints with Unreal or something, you're primarily learning to use the game in- Uh, this is one thing that I really disagree with. I mean, he's not necessarily wrong. Like, if you're making games with Unity, you're learning about game objects, and game objects that is a Unity-specific concept. There's no such thing as a game object in just C Sharp in general. But whilst you are learning very hyper-specific things that are specific to that game engine, 
Whilst you are learning that, you're also learning a language that is very generic. Personally, I have made a ton of random applications, random things with C-sharp, and my knowledge from C-sharp comes from using Unity. So yes, you will learn quite a lot of things that are hyper-focused to that specific engine, but you also learn so many other skills that are so generic, so applicable to literally anything. I'm pretty sure that with the knowledge that I have, with knowledge that I've gained from making tons of games with Unity, I'm pretty sure I could go work for Microsoft and work on some random software related to C-sharp. I'm pretty sure I could do that and do quite well. On the other hand, if you learn to make games without an engine by using a graphics library or something similar, you're spending a lot more time making your own systems. I mean, that kind of becomes exactly the same problem. Instead of working with specific game objects, you're working with specific visual representations of something like OpenGL or DirectX. So unless you're writing an assembly, you're always working on some kind of layer of abstraction. There's so much to learn that an engine normally does for you, such as the way you store and render a world or the way you handle entities. When you go this route, you'll get to know your language of choice even better than if you had chosen an engine. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, if you go the low level route, that definitely forces you to be hyper familiar with the actual language that you're using. But again, goes back to the same question, do you want to make games or do you want to deeply learn a language? There's no wrong answer, both are perfectly valid depending on what exactly you want to do. And you'll get much more experience that will force you to develop your problem solving skills. You'll be more likely to think about how something could be made rather than whether or not there is a library or some software that does what you want. Uh, there's definitely something to be said about over relying on tools. Like for example, the Unity Asset Store is absolutely excellent. You can find tools that will do just about anything. So there is something to be said about over relying on those tools and not actually trying to solve the problems yourself. But again, that is not really related to engine versus no engine. That is related to overusing or abusing tools and just trying to build something yourself. The skills you get are significantly more transferable than the skills you'd get while learning to use a game engine. Again, while working with or without a game engine, that is going to involve lots of problem solving. You are going to gain a lot of those skills regardless of using a game engine or not. So yes, some things will be specific to that game engine, but a lot of it is really just knowledge. I mean, for me personally, I've been writing code for 25 years. I started writing code by writing Merck scripts. That is a completely ancient language that is not used anywhere nowadays. I don't even think Merck exists anymore. But the knowledge that I gained while I was working on that, that still serves me well to this day. All the problem solving, all the logic skills that I gained while I was making all kinds of things, all kinds of trivia games, making hangman games, making simple applications in order to manage a IRC channel. All the knowledge that I gained there, that is still somewhere deep in my brain that still helps me to this day. Remember that knowledge doesn't really get replaced, it just gets built more and more on top of each other. One of the things that's worth noting here is that it's also easier to go from using a graphics library or something like that to using an engine rather than the other way around. Uh, is it though? Because again, the whole thing, it's all, everything is a layer of abstraction. So is it easier to go from the Unity layer of abstraction to, let's say, the OpenGL layer of abstraction? Is it easier to go through that one or the other way around? I would say either one is going to require learning. Whenever you switch tools, there's always some time you have to spend in order to learn those tools. I don't see that as either a positive or a negative, that's just what happens whenever you switch tools. The overwhelming majority of people who get into game development are not able to turn it into a sustainable career. Learning game dev without engines gives you significantly more transferable skills that, that can prepare you for working in the computer science industry. Again, I disagree with that. I mean, C-sharp is just C-sharp. If you learn the language, it doesn't matter if you learn it making games or making business apps or websites. If you learn the language, then you learn the language. It's not like if I suddenly tried to making a website with ASP, I would have no idea what to do. I would obviously have to learn the tools in order to actually learn how to make websites, but the language itself, all the knowledge that I've gained, that would still be very well transferable. There's nothing magic about making business apps. The language is the same, so if you know about classes, if you know about programming patterns, how to write good clean code, all of those skills are transferable, regardless if you're making games, business apps, anything. One example of that is how a while ago I was researching cloud. And for that, since I was using Azure, I used C-sharp. And again, all the knowledge that I've learned in Unity writing C-sharp for games, all of that knowledge was directly applicable to making some backend C-sharp code. Not only are the working conditions better than the game dev industry, but the pay is better as well. Yeah, that is definitely something. I mean, <laughs> that's one of the negatives of the game dev industry. Basically, you should only become a game developer if you absolutely love it, if you absolutely want to make games. Whereas if you're going with simply making money, then definitely do not go into the game industry. Go into a regular boring bank job, do some bank software, and you will earn a lot more money. But at the same time, I would say it's going to be a lot less fun. 
So personally, I love making games. I'm definitely going to continue regardless of the money. Although at the same time, there's no reason why you can't do both. You can definitely get a regular well-paying software development job and then on the weekends on your time off, just make some indie games just for fun. So you can definitely combine both. It is a lot of work, but if you really like making games and you want to have a comfortable life, then that is one valid option. Personally, my seven years of experience with Python that I got from using a graphics library over an engine has landed me a job and I regularly get smaller freelance jobs that pay very well. That's great, that's awesome, but once again, that has nothing to do with choosing an engine versus not choosing an engine. If you learn Unity and essentially you learn C-Sharp, there are many freelance C-Sharp jobs available. So that is an option regardless of choosing engine versus no engine. If you're interested in going with the no engine route at this point, you've got a ton of options. If you like Python, obviously there's Pygame, which is what I use. Pygame is good if you like pixel art and you don't have an interest in 3D stuff. There's also PyOpenGL if you want to get a bit lower level and get even better performance. If you like Java, there's LWJGL. If you like Lua, there's Love2D. If you like C++, there's... Oh, that's interesting. I didn't actually know there was a Lua-based game dev library. That's interesting, because Lua is more of a scripting language. So I didn't know that, but that is interesting. Lua is really extremely versatile, so that's awesome to know. Python's also the most widely used language in the world after JavaScript, according to the Stack Overflow developer survey. I'm pretty sure it has the widest variety of use cases as well. It's used for web development, bots, AI, data science, automation, computer vision, scraping, and so much more. Yeah, Python is a great language with a lot of use cases. Definitely true. Okay, so that's an interesting video. And there's actually apparently a sequel to it, so let's see this one. So I've officially learned why they always teach you to state your thesis at the end of an introduction in composition classes. I figured I'd make this video to clear things up. So I'll state my stance now so everyone half asleep can hear it. I'm glad I personally, as an individual, did not use a game engine, but the choice depends on the circumstance. Yeah, again, like I said a while ago, if you want to make engines, that's awesome, make engines. If you want to make games, that's awesome, make games. There's no right or wrong answer here. Thankfully, nowadays, there is so much education, so many tools, you can really do anything you want. To understand why I'm glad I didn't start game dev using engines, it's important to understand my opinion on the choice itself. Ultimately, the most important aspect of the decision of whether or not to use a game engine is your goal when making the games. If your primary goal for game development is education and you're looking to get experience with problem solving and programming in general, I'd highly recommend not using a game engine. Yep, 100% agree. If you want to learn just for fun, if you want to improve your programming skills and really deal with low-level languages and low-level things, then making your game engine is an excellent way to learn how to do all of that. My reasoning is similar to why many high schools and universities like to teach Python and Pygame as opposed to having people learn programming through game engine. Oh, is that a thing? Do colleges teach Python and Pygame? That's interesting. For me, I went to college, but I never really finished it, so my experience was very strange. And in high school, for some reason, my teacher taught us Pascal. I have no idea why Pascal, why that language, that's very strange, but anyways. I also learned a little bit about C Sharp back in high school, so that was interesting. Either way, had no idea that Pygame was used in colleges, but yeah, Python is an extremely versatile language, so that does make sense. Game engines force you to interact with their abstractions when making games. Making games through these abstractions change the type of problems you deal with to be less like the types of problems you deal with in the majority of the rest of the software industry. I can say for a fact that I would not have the job I have now had I used game engines for game development. Yeah, that part I sort of disagree with. I mean, I guess he did mention that his job he got because of Python. So yeah, by that, yeah. By, by definition, if he had no experience with Python, he might not have gotten that job. But I'm certain that if he was looking for a job on some kind of C-sharp software, some C-sharp bank software, I'm sure Unity experience would have helped. Or if he was working on embedded systems with C++, I'm sure Unreal experience would have helped. That entire argument about the learning experience aside though, I'd like to mention a few other factors. While still important, I believe they're less important than the learning-based argument. First, if you're looking to do 3D stuff, it takes a special kind of person to want to do that without an engine. I know a few people who do that, but it's really not for most people. Yeah, making 3D and low-level stuff, that is insanely complex. Sometimes people ask me in the comments, what math do I need to become a game developer? And my answer is usually you don't really need much. You just need the basics. If you know some basic trigonometry, some basic vector math, 
If you know that, then you know pretty much all the math required to make games. But if you want to make low level stuff, if you want to make low level graphics, then yeah, that is going to require a ton of math, a ton of matrices, transformations, all kinds of strange things. Personally, I do not have the math skills to do things like those. So yeah, if you go that route, be aware math is a huge requirement. Second, going out without an engine ultimately gives you more control, which is great if you want to make your own framework for making a certain type of game. I have personally benefited from this. It's the main reason why I continue to make games without engines. That is true. I mean, if you build your own engine, you can make an engine that is perfect for exactly the type of game that you're making. Whereas engines like Godot, Unity, or Unreal, those are made to be general purpose engines. Those are made so that you can build literally any game using them. Naturally, there are some benefits of making one tool that does just one job and does it extremely well. One example of that is, for example, Factorio. That is an insanely complex game. It is one that if they were trying to do that inside of an engine like Unreal or Unity, if they did that, they would require so many low-level optimizations that it would essentially become almost a custom engine. Which is why they went with a custom engine, because to support a level of complexity like that with literally hundreds of thousands or millions of particles on screen, to support that really needs a very specialized, very custom thing. Although it is still possible to build games on this scale, even using something like Unity. One example is the game Dyson Sphere Program, which also has a massive scale, and it is built with Unity. I assume they've got a lot of custom multi-threaded code to make it all work. And recently, Unity Dots actually just hit 1.0, and with that, you can build insanely performant things directly inside Unity. Finally, for some people, it's just straight up easier to not use a game engine. Some people find it easier to build complex systems from simple functionality rather than understanding and using other people's higher level functionality to build complex systems. This is one of those things where it's more like those people are lying to themselves, I would say. You might say, oh, I'm much more productive working on my own thing. If I fully understand the entire tech stack, I'm much more productive. But usually what happens is you really just get caught up on building all kinds of systems from scratch and you never actually make your game. So that goes back to the same thing that I've mentioned many times in this video. Make games or make engines, you can't really do both unless you're super special. Telling yourself, oh no, I'm much better off not making an engine because I fully understand everything and I'm very productive. Chances are, if you're thinking like that, you will probably never actually finish the game. In conclusion, I believe that the most valid reason for not using a game engine is for the purpose of learning. Aside from that, there are some less common cases where someone may find working on a lower level to be a better option. For most people, they're probably going to want to be using an engine, but you really need to take a look at the pros and cons yourself. Okay, that's the video, and yep, these two videos, it's a really interesting discussion. Choosing not to use an engine, that is definitely a valid option. I mean, if you want to go for education, for just learning how everything works nowadays, because again, remember, game engines aren't really magic. It's all really just software, it's all really just code. If you want to really understand how those engines work in the back end, then building your own engine is definitely an excellent way to do that. Either building your own engine or just using a low level library. But in the end, I would say my opinion is choose do you want to make a game or do you want to make an engine? Unless you are a literal genius, you probably cannot do both. So make your choice and there's really no wrong answer. If you want to learn how to make games with Unity, you can watch my 10 hour free course and then the follow up multiplayer course. Those two cover a lot of the basics and lots of stuff that I'm actually using in my upcoming Steam game Dinky Gardens. All right, so I hope you found this interesting. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.